Well, we've just left our fabulous Anchorage. It was definitely one of the best that we've ever been to. Um, we found the secret swimming place. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to swim there because uh, we couldn't find a way down from the the cliffs. Uh, it was too dodgy to climb down. And then looking at the book again, it did say that it was a 200 meter swim to get there in a wetsuit with boat support. So I didn't go for that in the end, but I did have a swim off the back of the boat. Lots of photos to follow. Um, most beautiful coastline still over there looks really beautiful although there is a very very dodgy bit of water over there around something called the v scaries which um, are the reason that there are now two rnli stations in shetland uh, there was one um the first one i'm not sure when it was established but a long time ago in lerwick on the east side of the island um, but they didn't have one on the west side of the island until there was a really nasty wreck on these skerries and um, apparently it was pretty horrific um, locals tried to get to the sailors to rescue them but only had small open boats and, and just couldn't do it basically watched all these people die it was awful so that's when they set up another rnli station on the other side of the island um, now we have changed our plans again today you can see how beautiful it is it's absolutely gorgeous wall to wall sunshine barely a cloud in the sky but don't be fooled because there is weather on the way. So we're trying to make as much progress as we can over the next couple of days. We were gonna take it a little bit slower and stop off at more places, but we have decided that we would like to get into Lerwick um, into safety before the 40 mile an hour winds arrive on Thursday. So we're going up round the very top today. It's quite a long leg today. Um, up round um, Muckle Flugger and Outstack and then uh, back round to um, Lunna Vo to have uh, lunch. Lunna Vo is the first place where the Shetland bus set sail from uh, before it was moved to Scalloway. So that was somewhere that we really wanted to see. Um, and then we're off to, what's it called? Where are we staying tonight? Lunna Vo's tomorrow. Oh, Lunna Vo's tomorrow. Oh, I got that wrong. Oh, Lunna Vo's tomorrow. Outstack and then Balta Sound tonight. Lanovo is lunch tomorrow. <laughs> it's a good job one of us knows where we're going, isn't it? <laughs> um, yeah, so that's us today. And um, we are hoping we're going to have enough wind to sail. We've got the main sail. Oh, you can see it. Uh, the main sail. The main sail's up already, but we're motor sailing. It is coming, we believe. Um, so far, we've got a nice flat sea, relatively speaking. And um, looking forward to a day of sunshine. Speak to you later. Going around Muckleflugger and Outstack is a bit of a planning exercise because of tides and what they call roosts, which is the local term for tidal races. There's a tidal race which forms near Muckleflugger and Outstack, and there's another over by where waypoints 7 and 8 are, which is the home of Score and Lamberness. Um, there's a really interesting note in the Clyde Cruising Club sailing directions, which is worth a read. It says Lamberness lies on the north side of the entrance to Norwich at the northeast of Unst. The score roost forms between there and the home of Score, one mile north northwest. Confused seas are experienced most of the time, and with the north going stream, the roost is particularly dangerous. Even in moderate weather, this area should be given a berth of at least three miles. Fishing boats avoid the roost by keeping close into Lamberness and the home of Score, but this should not be attempted without advice. So I wanted to look at that and see whether or not we could make it so that we could cut in safe and go close in and save probably five or six miles on going around the outside by a three mile radius, bearing in mind that I was heading for Belter Sound, which meant I was coming back in from that three miles out that I'd have to go. To do that, we had to work out the time to arrive so that we had the best possible chance of being able to visually check the roost and go around the inside. There's a useful diagram showing the tidal flows around the top end of Shetland in the passage information section of the Reeds Almanac. And these are all based on times relative to high water at Dover. This shows a strong flow through Yell Sound to the northwest at up to six knots between one hour after high water Dover and five and a half hours before it. Bloomell Sound is right next to it and smaller, so I presume there's going to be a smaller current flowing through there at the same sorts of time. Across the top, the flow is lower at about a knot and a half, between plus 1 hour 30 and minus 5 on Dover. 
These are all reversed for uh, southbound flow, minus 5 to plus 1 for the two sounds. And across the top, we have minus 4 to plus 30, which means that across the top, there's about an hour when there's slack water. The trick then is to arrive at waypoint 6, 7 and 8 at a time when the water is slack. I chose to arrive at waypoint 6 at Dover minus 5.30, which meant I'd have the last half an hour of the west going stream across the top and then a full hour with slack water. Cutting in close from Outstack to Holm of Score and Lamberness is only 5 miles, so this can easily be done in an hour and a half if conditions look right. The leg between 5 and 6 is 21 miles long, and the leg between 6 and 7 is 6 miles long if we don't shorten it. If we can arrive at waypoint 6 at high water Dover minus 5.30, then we can go between 6 and 9 during slack water, and that will allow us simply to do a visual check of the sea conditions and make sure that the roosts are not there and that conditions are suitable, and then we can cut the corners and say 5 or 6 miles. What time then do we need to leave waypoint 5? Well, if we apply a boat speed of 5.5 knots, which is quite conservative for my vessel, then we need to plan what the tidal lift's going to be. It's very easy to go, oh, six knots of current, that's a lot. But remember, that's six knots maximum, and that will be in the narrowest point of Yell Sound. So the tidal lift has got to be based on six knots at bigger, which is only one mile across. But we are on an area where it's six miles across, so I reckon there's only about a knot of current there. And that knot is not in the direction of our track. So the amount of that knot that's in the direction of track is about half a knot. So I'm going to apply a speed over the ground of six knots for planning, which gives us three and a half hours to do 21 miles. So high water Dover plus three. Then we just work backwards from waypoint five to find the ideal departure time. It's a really exciting moment because we are just about to go past the northernmost part of the United Kingdom. Um, on your right there, you can see the island with the lighthouse on the top. Um, that is Muckle Flogger. And to the left, a little bit, is the most northernmost part. The most northernmost, no, the most northern part, which is uh, Outstack. So Outstack um, is always, has always been completely uninhabited. Um, Muckle Flugger was, un was inhabited and was the, the most northerly um, inhabited island in the British Isles up until 1995 when the um, residents from the lighthouse moved out. Muckle means big and Flugger is from the Nordic Fluga, um, which means cliff island. And you might well be looking at these and thinking, oh, I imagine those were formed um, through volcanic action. Well, actually, I can tell you they weren't. They were formed when two giants called Hermann and Saxa fell in love with the same mermaid. And um, they fought each other and threw rocks at one another, one of which ended up being Muckle Flugger. The mermaid said that she would marry whichever one of the giants followed her to the North Pole. They both followed her, but they couldn't swim and they drowned. So I think that's excellent advice, ladies, to get rid of unwanted suitors, just to ask them to follow you to the North Pole. When we arrived at Beam Muckle Flugger, it was really obvious that the roost was not going to be a problem between it and Outstack. So we turned just north of Outstack. And from there, we could clearly see the home of Score and see that the water was clear there. So we headed for home of score, keeping the option to turn to the north if anything started to cut up. And we were able, in the end, to turn directly to Lamberness around the inside track and save about six miles. I hope you found that useful or interesting or better still both. And as always, please do hit the bell icon, hit subscribe, hit like. All of these three things really help the channel to grow. Do come back soon.